we are not denying that there is any climate emergency. And, you know, let's make no bones about this. If we don't address this issue, then the scale of tragedy that we have seen in the last 12 to 18 months globally with COVID could be happening every year if we don't do something about climate temperature rises. We achieved operational carbon neutrality in 2020 and are committed to doing so every year going forward. Uh, we source 100% of our energy needs from renewable energy sources. We have just made arguably the biggest commitment of any banking group in the world to finance or facilitate finance to the tune of two and a half trillion dollars to deliver uh, more sustainable solutions for the world, and a trillion of that is for climate in particular. Mm. Let's talk about what JP Morgan contributes then uh, as towards fossil fuel industries, because in 2019 it was certainly more than any other bank, a total of over 250 billion into coal, oil and gas firms, I think, over the four years uh, previous to 2019. You say you have new targets, so talk to me about those targets. What happens next? With companies that derive the majority of their revenue from coal, uh, by 2024, uh, we will not be providing capital markets, advisory or other services to that type of company. But now, if you look at the most difficult sectors where this is a challenge, mm. electric power, for example, uh, scope one emissions on power generation uh, are very much the mainstay of the mm. carbon emissions for that sector. Relative to a 2019 baseline over the next uh, 10 years, so up to 2030, we will be looking to reduce the carbon intensity of that financing portfolio by 69%. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also set targets in oil and gas um, and also automotive uh, to reduce the carbon intensity of the financing portfolio there as well. Does this bank support a vision for no fossil fuels going forward to end our climate crisis? There won't be no fossil fuels. I don't believe that's the world that we're going to end up in. And the Paris Agreement, which is what we've aligned our you know, efforts to, envisages. What, what, is, what, is, what is envisaged is bringing down overall greenhouse gas emissions, not just carbon emissions, but greenhouse gas emissions, um, so that we can keep temperature reductions to a minute, to, to, to you know, temperature reduction to get it to the 1.5 degree uh, maximum rise. Do you fear at this bank the pressure from activist shareholders that you have clearly witnessed across other industries, for example, the oil and gas industry? Is that a concern here? No, and I'll tell you why. I think activism often suggests a kind of black and white, saints and sinners, them against us type of view of the world. But actually, in the end, what do our stakeholders want? They want us to be a profitable business, mm -hmm. producing long-term sustainable returns in a way that is good for society as a mm -hmm. whole. Um, because the two, th those two things are mutually dependent. You can't achieve one without the other. Let's talk about uh, some of what we've heard from some of the key stakeholders in the fight against climate change of late. John Kerry, a few months ago, I spoke to when he was in the UAE, and he said, and I quote, concessional and private finance will be instrumental in fighting climate change. In your opinion, how important is climate financing in winning this battle? It's enormous. You, you, you are not going to be able to green our economies globally mm. without private finance. That is absolutely clear. Uh, and in the public sector, there's going to be a huge fiscal deficit overhang through the costs um, clocked up in needing to deal with this dreadful Corona, COVID, ninety, uh, COVID virus that we've been we've been dealing with, and so it stands to reason that the private sector and business and finance is going to be looked to to help to help raise raise the monies needed to affect the transition. John Kerry also said, and I quote: "This is going to be the biggest economic transformation since the Industrial Revolution, and that brings with it a lot of fear, um, the cost of jobs." Well, this uh, is why at risk. this is why just transition is vital, and I think that President Biden and his administration as a whole, right from the start, from the get-go, when you know the administration he started signing executive orders around uh, the green agenda, were absolutely clear that they wanted to transition to a net zero world, get the U.S. in the right place, in their view on that, 
at the same time as continuing to ensure people have jobs and a livelihood. At COP26, will JP Morgan still continue to say that the solution is not as simple as walking away from fossil fuels? I tell you, it isn't as simple as walking away from fossil fuels. And let me just untangle that a bit, because a lot of people say, look, with fossil fuel companies or businesses which are heavy emitters of carbon, you should just dump the stock. You should abandon that business. So that means abandoning the people who work in that business. But it also means, well, just kind of washing your hands of any responsibility from uh, trying to help that business transition to operating in a different way. It means that that business is quite likely to end up in the hands of or be financed by somebody who doesn't really particularly care about the environment and helping to transition that company. And so overall, what's that going to do for the environment? It's not going to do much at all. So how do you ensure that a decade from now, this bank is not considered by some, if not many, as the world's worst banker when it comes to climate chaos. How do you ensure that? Doing what we have said we will do and delivering on the commitments that we have made is the way that we will be able to prove that we walk the walk and we don't just talk the talk um, on these things. And we've already got a strong track record on that. Um, you know, having helped finance or facilitate, you know, produce, you know, financed or facilitated finance to the tune of $200 billion last year to help deliver on this agenda. So all I would say is, you know, measure us by what we do and actions speak louder than words. So we will deliver what we say we are going to do and then that will be, that will be what will define us.